How on earth did we end up here today talking about how Utah, Utah of all places, is one of the best football programs in the nation? Today we're going to explain that here on Big Dumb Football. Utah football, not a new thing. However, this phase of Utah football really started in earnest back in the early 2000s, when after a two-year period where Urban Meyer comes in, gets them to an undefeated season in 2004, and then leaves, they face a choice. Because we've seen programs like this before. Get a coach, use them as a stepping stone to a larger job, get them to a good place, and then watch them fall off over a series of years. That's not what Utah did. The first choice Utah made in becoming a power in their own right in college football on their own terms and consistently over what is now a 20-year span of time was to get somebody local. Kyle Whittingham has been in or around the Utah football program either as a coach or a graduate assistant since 1994. The irony is that he played football at BYU, Utah's historical rival in one half of the Holy War. They hired him from defensive coordinator to head coach. And from that point forward, they've had one thing that's been their secret to their success, and that is consistency. They have had the same head coach since 2005. They have had the same strength coach since 2005. Their current defensive coordinator, Morgan Scally, he's been in the program both as a player and an assistant for most of his career. Everyone in the Utah program, to one extent or another, is a Utah dude. Even the people that they've brought in to hire, they don't tend to leave. This is a place that once they find something that works, they stick to it. And in 2005, they got lucky and they found something that worked in the form of big old truck Kyle Whittingham. And I'm not saying that just as a metaphor. The man's built like a truck. He's like in fabulous shape. And I don't think he's missed a day working out in like 35 years. But you can fact check me on that. So as of 2021, Kyle Whittingham had been driving the same truck since like, I don't know, the first Bush administration. And it's a handy metaphor for how Kyle Whittingham and this program do everything. It's this big battered beast of a machine that won't stop running and just keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again and has run on a lot of great design and a lot of love and attention. That, to me, is a great metaphor for what Utah does and how they do it so well. Urban Meyer is definitely responsible for the early rocket fuel stage of getting Utah into orbit. That much is beyond question, and all credit is awarded there. However, the bulk of it at this point, since he's been the coach since 2005 and completely built the program in his own image, is Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham deserves 90 to 95% of the credit for what Utah is as a program now, he's the one who's insisted that they be a run first offense with a powerful defense backing it up. He's the one who's made this team the same every single year. He's the one who's created this community. Additionally, consider that Utah is in their conference and has been for the past decade or so. They've been the big bad dude you don't want to face. They've been the grappler who can take a boxer to the ground. They have been the working class, yes, big truck team that's capable of sideswiping a lot of the luxury vehicles cruising around the top of the Pac-12. Looking at you, USC. I mean, if you watch that 34-32 game and didn't see a Ferrari getting cleaned off the track by a dump truck, then you were watching a much different game than I was. This game that had everyone deeply, deeply confused about the future of not just Caleb Williams as a college quarterback, but USC. They beat them with the third string quarterback who was a pig farmer. They beat them with a safety playing running back. They beat them missing several key players on defense and they just kept hitting anyway. Their recruiting profile has gradually changed into something really special. First of all, they pull their recruits from a diverse series of places. I think the really undersold story with Utah is how well they keep and develop local talent they keep a lot of that local talent and that's a not insignificant achievement given BYU is right there in Provo with its own unique recruiting pitch but the Utes have countered by recruiting and developing with their own entirely different slant they're really proud of having a very diverse team it's roughly like one third white one third black one third Polynesian which really is a unique find when you come to college football roster building I think another thing that they do very well they don't necessarily want these guys out there squatting 800 pounds and deadlifting 800 pounds and doing everything they train 
very specifically for players and position, and they don't really want you necessarily to be the biggest dude out there, but you have to know what you're doing and you have to be built for it. So they've managed to meld all of this into a very specific pitch to recruits and their families to say, you can come to Salt Lake, you can be super comfortable and we'll get you to class. And on top of all of that, you're going to become a really good football player, maybe even an NFL player. One thing Utah specializes in is in finding undervalue or underscouted talent. Take Devin Lloyd, a first rounder taken by the Jags this past NFL draft. He was a two-star recruit coming into college. Star low to Lele, he was known but he was a three-star recruit. He wasn't a can't-miss four- or five-star recruit. He just grew up into that. My favorite little quirk of the Utah recruiting profile, they weren't necessarily first on the Australian punter bandwagon, but they were the ones who really went hardest into it. And they've had Tom Hackett, uh, Mitch Wisnowski, all of these guys who are at the forefront of the trend of finding great special team skill players in strange places abroad like Australia. Everybody does it now, but Utah was one of the first to go whole hog into it. Jonah Ellis is to me a prototypical Utah star. Was he completely unheralded? No, no. He had offers from people. What kind of people? Uh, Service academies, Boise State, Louisville. So not top, top tier teams, but some interest. But at Utah, he's taken that some interest and that sort of three-star rank, and he's become a five-star performer. He's got 10 sacks this year. You have to account for him at every point. He's the kind of guy who can crack a game plan in half with one or two plays a game. And Utah finds these guys year in and year out. This is a program that is having their first top 25 class ever. Consider the success that they have had already without getting a top quartile level of talent. Now, consider what they can do now that they're getting that. Utah is one of those places where I'm afraid I have nothing but things that sound like cliches, but also happen to be true. People who are serious, you know, Utah Utes people and, and who have been in the program and played for them. You know, there really is a tighter kind of community surrounding that program. I think by necessity, by population, by the fact of, you know, they are a, a unique quantity and a fairly unique state that has managed to do things in a fairly unique way. But my favorite example of this is the moment of loudness, which happens between the third and the fourth quarter. Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe were two Utah players, very important to the team, both killed in different gun violence incidents within the span of a year. Kyle Whittingham and the team took this mourning process and, and the process of memorializing them and recognizing them about as seriously as I've ever seen a program take it. They retired the number 22. Um, there's a portal 22 in the stadium that has, you know, their their images like above the the gate when you pass it and then there's the moment of loudness where everyone's encouraged to get loud and you know you take your phones at night and you hold them up for them and they have this nice video presentation about them and anyone else that's you know sort of been lost over the past year it is a wonderful memorial moment not at all morbid just the sort of celebration of who they are and if you think you're ready for it i have news for you you're not you're not it's a very emotional thing, especially if you're watching it for the first time. I saw it this year and I thought I was super hard and ready for it. And uh, your man was crying. And honestly, if you put it on again right now in like a YouTube video, if I was standing in the stadium, I'd probably tear up again. Now, is that emotion messing with me when it comes to evaluating how this program is different? Is this sentiment infecting how I feel about my cold, calculated analysis of why Utah is better? Yes and no. Because I did love that moment. And I love how much this obviously affected everyone in the community and how they wanted to recognize them and keep their memory alive. But it also made you realize this is a program that really does value its people because they're people, they're harder to find. Salt Lake's got to recruit a little harder. They have to do things a little bit differently. And it's hard not to value the people you're bringing into the program because they're the key to your success. And to me, that's all traced back to not just the community in Salt Lake, but to the one person who's been the pin around which this is all revolved. Big Truck himself, old reliable, starts up every time. Kyle Whittingham. I mean, that dude is really different. He's helped make a different place, different in a really good way. And if you don't believe me, I don't know, show up between the third and the fourth quarters in Salt Lake. See if you can keep a dry eye. Oh, hi. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd like to speak to you and ask you a question. What would you like us to talk about? Because we're here to answer your questions about football, the big dumb questions that maybe you were afraid to ask, but really want to know. Happy to explain those. Go ahead, leave a comment below. We'll see it if we like your idea. We'll just go ahead and shoot a video about it.